It's up to you to decide what time you get up and how long you need to come around. Most likely, this will be linked with other lifestyle commitments and requirements. Once you've decided to sit down and work, though, the next challenge is to actually work and not get distracted by other things or put off working while procrastinating. The biggest issue with procrastinating is that it's not even restful or fun. When most of us procrastinate, it means we'll spend our time browsing the web absent-mindedly, playing mobile games, or otherwise just generally wasting time while feeling stressed about the fact that we're not working. Now think how much nicer it would be to work solidly in the morning and then to have a few hours at the end of the day to relax and to really unwind and enjoy your freedom. So. How do you encourage yourself to dive straight into work and to keep working until you've finished everything? Well, the following tips will help you do that. The first important point is to make sure that you do have periods of relaxation and fun on the horizon. If you're setting out to work and your plan is simply to work solidly from first thing in the morning until last thing at night, then your brain is very likely to fight you on that. Unfortunately, most of us do not have complete control over our brains and emotions, and when we work against them, that's when we have problems. If you know that you have eight hours of solid work ahead with no break in sight, then that is when you're going to struggle to stay focused. So instead, you're going to separate your day into distinct blocks, which will include time for you to relax and unwind. To do this, you need to think first about what you need, stroke, want to accomplish that day, and how long you have until it's time to sign off. Another piece of useful information is to know roughly how long you tend to take completing a given amount of work. This, in turn, will allow you to work out how long you need to complete each task. With that knowledge, you'll be able to break each task into several hour slots and punctuate them with periods of rest. Even if that rest is just ten minutes or twenty minutes, that's enough to give you something to work towards and to give you a break, which is important for your health as much as anything else. A day might look like this. Now, let's say this is Monday. From 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., you're going to work out. Then from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., you're going to work on a guest post for client one. From 10 a.m. to 10 10 a.m., make a cup of tea. 10 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., look for new clients and respond to emails. 11 a.m. to 11 20 a.m., time for a mid-morning snack or read a magazine. 11 20 a.m. to 2 p.m. Link building for three smaller clients. Then from 2 p.m. to 2:30 p.m., you're going to have lunch and perhaps watch an episode of your favorite TV show. From 2:30 to 4 p.m., it's site design. 4 p.m. to 4:10 p.m., you're going to make coffee. From 4:10 p.m. to 5:30 p.m., you're going to start tomorrow's work. And from 5:30 p.m. to 6:30 p.m., well, that's time to relax. Now, this gives you a day that's filled with lots of large work projects, but also gives you opportunities to relax and unwind and to catch your breath. Starting work isn't so bad when you know that between the hours of 11 a.m. and 11:20 a.m., you'll be able to relax with a cup of tea, and working again until 2 p.m. Isn't so bad when you know you've got half an hour for lunch. While most of us think that the best way to be productive is to dive straight into work and give ourselves no breaks, this is actually the worst thing you can do, as you'll find your brain fights that and urges you to do more fun or relaxing things. It might feel a bit indulgent to be taking an hour's worth of breaks and snacks, but you probably break for longer than that in a day. Only now you're actually enjoying that time off, using it to recharge your batteries and making it more predictable and scheduled. Something else you might have noticed here is that I've gone as far as to schedule when to drink cups of tea and coffee. Now, here's a pro tip: 
a cup of coffee at 4 p.m. is a great way to pick yourself up during a time when the body is most tired and lethargic after work. This is actually really important and will help you to be much more productive. Why? Because little breaks to make tea can actually take you out of the zone and represent a much bigger break in your workflow than you realise. If the first thing you do is make tea or coffee, then have a snack, then answer emails, well, it can quickly get to 10.30am and you haven't achieved anything. This is a very crushing feeling and it's enough to set you back much further. So instead, start working on something useful and important right away and that way, you'll be able to get your day off to a great start. Come 10.30am, you'll already have a big win under your belt, which will set you up for the day ahead. Another tip to making this plan work is to make sure that the scheduled time slots for each piece of work are longer than you think they'll probably need to be. In other words, if a piece of work normally takes you two hours to complete, then schedule it to take two and a half hours. Why? because that way you'll trust in the system and feel like you really can take those breaks. If your work is constantly down to the wire, then it will hurt the quality. It will make you feel stressed about finishing it and you'll risk not getting everything done that you need to. The next question is what you should be setting as your first task for the day. And the answer is that ideally, you should make the task something relatively easy and fun. The hardest part of getting into the flow when working is putting yourself in that mental state to begin with. Once you're going, it's relatively easy to maintain. It's getting to the point where you're going in the first place that's hard. If you make your first task one that is overwhelming, unpleasant and very dull, chances are you'll find yourself putting it off making excuses and procrastinating. But if you make it something relatively easy or fun, then you might find yourself jumping into it much more effectively. That said, also try to move the more crucial and urgent work towards the start of the day. The aim is that if you reach burnout by 3pm, you should already have accomplished all of the absolute most urgent tasks you need to complete. Again, this buffer will allow you to put more trust in the system. Another useful tip in this regard is to half finish a project the day before. You know, start writing a piece of content or an email or start designing a website or handling some on-site SEO. This will make it much easier to dive back in right away the next day. We don't like unfinished business. It's human nature to want to complete a piece of work you've already started, and this means you'll be able to dive in with a lot less resistance. Finally, if you experience the equivalent of writer's block, then the best way to overcome this is to force yourself to do some work. Now, whether that means designing a few buttons or just writing something down, you know, don't worry if you're lacking inspiration and the work lacks quality. The best way to get into the groove is just to start, and you can always go back and fix what you wrote or made later on. Try following these pointers for the next few days and see how it improves your workflow. What you should find is that you're able to start earning back some time during your day and thereby get yourself some free time. From there, we can start looking at how to improve the quality of your business and your life. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.